Hi, we are the Ohio guys in location in Columbus, Ohio, in OhioCon. I'm Christian Ocampo, and today my special guest is David Matringa. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's a, a great con so far. Uh, it's just got a really good vibe to it. You know, I was talking to somebody earlier, and uh, they were saying it, it's a really big con. You know, it's got a lot of people, but it has a, such a mellow feel to it. Um, so it's an interesting line to walk of... You know, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot going on, but it's just kind of a laid back sort of family atmosphere. So it, I'm having a blast so far and it's it's just started, so yeah. Yeah, man, this is exciting, like the guest list, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. So yeah, we have a few questions for you. Sure. Uh, first one, what was it like working on five centimeters per second? Uh, you know, that's one of those, those ones that, uh, you know, I tend to get cast in those kind of roles where it's a, a guy longing for something or uh, lost love or lost connection. Um, I don't know what it is about my voice um, that kind of naturally has that in it, but someone who's introspective and, and uh, grappling or searching with stuff. So, you know, and that one being kind of like a, you know, not living with that for so long, it's something that you do in the moment, you know, and you're there and then it kind of leaves you for a bit, but we were just talking about it, you know, prior, and, uh, you know, I can relate to it on many levels. I mean, I think it's about lost connection, and it's also about the big question of, like, what if, you know, what if we had connected in a different way, what if uh, we had met each other at a different time, or, you know, timing, and um, and how if you if you hold on to that, it can sort of torment you, or, or you know, make you question your life, question your choices and um, I just think that's all really human stuff so I, anytime I get to work on something where I can tell a story like that uh, and kind of sh shine light on you know something that in one way shape or form we've all struggled with it, it's it's always a blast to do that and it's a beautiful it's beautifully animated as well and that's always just icing on the cake yeah that was one of a kind work out there so, yeah, great, great anime movie. <laughs> no problem. Uh, speaking of lost love and tragedies, yeah. what was it like working on Clannad After Story? You know, Clannad has been After Story, the the motion picture, all of it. Um, it was one of those kind of surprise things, uh, I, and I don't know if it was a surprise for for anybody else, but for me. You know, we worked on it, and it was it was intense to be in that space. I mean, that guy has uh, Tomoya has a lot of pain, a lot of regret, a lot of I think kind of anger and and pent up emotions, and and he doesn't quite know how to deal with them, and and um, so you have to sort of embody that and figure and figure out how to how to make that come through in your voice. And uh, there were some scenes I remember doing in the booth that were emotional. You know, you had to kind of go there because uh, you kind of, you really can't fake that stuff. You know, um, uh, there was something else I was going to say about that, but I can't remember now. Um, so it was oh oh it it was just a surprise. It was surprising that that title has touched so many people. I've already had people come up to me, um, you know, today in in this con and, and just thank me for doing it and 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 thank the producers for optioning it and do and 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 producing it um so that's the best part is getting to see people really affected by it and and happy that it's out there in the world and that they were i had one guy um on my twitter feed that said you know he watched that and and it made him realize that he you know wanted to have a family and 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 kind of helped him prioritize what he wanted to do with his life and stuff like that. It's just, it's cool. I mean, you know, it's really cool because we're stuck in a booth and we don't, we don't really know how, what we do, how it affects people. And so coming to conventions is awesome for that reason that you get to hear people's feedback and it's just cool to be a part of it because you never know when something's going to be, you know, that big of a hit or when it's going to be, you know, something that just kind of falls away. But yeah, it was, it's, it, it was a challenge to work on it and it's been like a, I'm just grateful to have the response that it's had. Yeah, that that connected to a lot of people's sorts, man. It did, it did. And and originally I thought that it connected with females more, but I'm blown away by the amount of like guys that come up and say, "Man, thank you for that. Like it helped me work through something or whatever." So 
yeah, really cool, really cool. Yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, another project worked on. What's the life working on Appleseed? Appleseed is, uh, you know, it's an interesting title because I find that some people have never heard of it, and then some people are huge fans of it. Um, I had this lady uh, who she's dear to me now. She's uh, I've seen her in Miami twice now, and she bought me a brought me a full uh, like life size figure, not life size, but hey, uh, life size. That would be crazy, like ah, Briarios, uh, but like a little figurine, you know, uh, an action figure, and that's one of the characters that I've lived with for the longest. Um, that I've uh, because we we did Ex Machina. Um, and I was sort of, I got to be collaborative with the, with the producers and the directors on that more than normal. So it was like we kind of created the character together and they were trying to, you know, so they were trying to kind of reboot that franchise and we did Ex Machina and then they liked our cast. So we went and recorded the first one again and they released that as a box set. And then, uh, it just so happened that I got to do the motion capture work for, Appleseed Alpha, which is the latest one that's out. Um, and so that was a really interesting experience as an actor to voice these characters, uh, you know, voice this character for two, two movies and then to have to do it um, physically, you know, to get the motion capture suit on and we were in Japan and, and we did all the scenes like you shoot a film and then to come back and record the voice over that uh, to watch them sort of having animated over my physicality was really cool. And I, I love the character of Briarios. Um, there's something, again, again, it's a similar trend, but about him that is, he's more of the stoic, uh, you know, what we think of as a man's man, kind of stoic and silent and honorable. Um, but he's, in a way, trapped in the body that he's in. Even though it's a great, uh, cyborg body and it's can do amazing things he can't really touch Dunin he can't you know so he's in a way tormented by that somehow you know uh, but yeah that's the character that I've lived with the longest and it's 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 all I, lo I love that character a lot I really do I did from the very beginning so to be able to keep working on him is, is awesome wow. yeah all right <laughs> another project Attack on Titan. Yeah. How was that? Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's. I, I. love that character too. He's again. He's a guy who has some type of a. You don't. You don't know what's going on with him. He's a little bit shy, it seems, or um, maybe he's not telling the whole story, or you know. And he's only in the. You know, in the first season, he's only in those. In I think two episodes. Well, that he speaks. He's in all of them. You see camera shots of him and he always looks a little bit afraid or you know a little bit tentative and it's it's great man I mean you know I don't even think in Japan they knew that that the attack on Titan would be as big as it is it's such a fan favorite um, and Bertolt I, I love him man he's who knows and you know I don't I, I can't talk about any spoilers or anything but people have you know come up to me and said do you know do you know what's gonna happen and I just kind of go yeah I know a little bit um, so when I auditioned for that, you know, that, that's up at Funimation in Dallas. So I record my auditions and I, I'll email them into to Funimation. Um, and if you're out of town, you do that sometimes. Uh, if you're in Dallas, you'll, you know, go into the studio and audition. And, uh, Mike, you know, I really wanted something in there. And Mike called me, Mike McFarland, who directed it. And he said, Hey man, I, I've got this role and I, I really want you to do it. Um, but I wanted to check it out with you first. I, you know, it's it's not a big role, but it it, it potentially could be bigger later on. <laughs> and I was like, man, sure, you know, yeah, of course, I'll do it. I love Mike, and uh, he's a great great director, great actor, and he he's an actor's director, you know. So um, I was like, yeah, let's do it. And this is before I knew anything about it. And then having read uh, read about it a little bit, I'm like, oh wow, so. It's pretty exciting. It's really exciting. And, and it's a great, I love the character too. Because again, it's still within that kind of realm of what's this going on with this guy? What's he, what's up with him? He seems cool, but is he? What's his deal? So I'm excited to find out too. Yeah. I think many, many people are. Yeah, yeah. yeah very much Okay. So. Another recent series you were in, what was like working on Captain Hardick? Oh, yeah. 
Man, you know, that's like one of those, like, dream kind of, I mean, you know, the CG, the, the animation is, like, stunningly beautiful, you know, and the lighting in that, um, it was great, man. I mean, you know, I've, I, it's kind of similar to what I've already expressed. Uh, you know, again, that character is kind of a quiet, brooding. He doesn't really speak that much throughout that film. He really doesn't. So the challenge with working on that character is, you, you know, he he um, he doesn't speak that much. So you don't. You have to watch his movements when he's not speaking, you know, the cape flip or when he turns and walks or the way that he sits down and puts his elbows on the, on the, uh, armrests. You kind of have to watch those things because that's really more of his story than his dialogue even, you know? I mean, for the first like 20 minutes of that film, I don't think he, he says like five sentences or something, you know? Um, so that's always a challenge too, because you don't want to just, just embody the dialogue. You've got to figure out what's going on with this guy, you know? Um, yeah, and, and so, but to be a part of that, I mean, it's so beautiful, and to get to, like, put your voice to something that's that stunningly, uh, beautiful is, is a privilege, so, it, yeah, it was great to work on that. Okay, is there anything coming out that you can talk about, anything you want to plug in this time? Uh, there, well, no, I can't really talk, I'm, I'm working on a couple things right now, um, two things in particular that I can't really talk about, but I just did, um, Made Sama, which is out, and I I had such a blast working on that. Um, you know, anytime you get to work with Monica, she's just she's awesome, uh, and we got to work together on Watamote as well. And so those are the two out right now that I'm like really proud of. And you know, Emily Neves uh, directed those, and I, she did a great job of assembling a, a a great cast. And and she's you know being an actor herself uh, is an actor's director as well, and just so it's it's a it's a fun time. It's a pleasant time. You get to play and work and you know make choices. Uh, there's a couple things. I think it was. I'm not sure if it was made summer or Watamote now, but I was just there was some. My character did something weird with his mouth, and I made up some like noise and. I was just doing it as a joke, and they liked it, and they were like, "We're keeping it." So it's somewhere in there, and I, I can't wait to see it. But. Yeah, though, I'm pretty proud of those. Um, but yeah, that's about it, yeah. Okay, uh, final question. Any Facebook, Twitter for the fans to get hold of you? Yeah, yeah, I'm really active on Twitter right now, and it's at David Matranga one uh, That's my handle on Twitter. Um, and I also have a, a Facebook actor page, which I'm trying to promote. I'm posting more there, production photos, um, anime photos, character photos, things like that. Uh, so I'd love it if people would go and like that page and follow me on Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm really active on Twitter. I, I, I was late to Twitter, um, and I was doing a show at the alley in Houston and I was like, man, you know, I was in the dressing room and I was like, I gotta, I need to get on Twitter. And I, right there with my laptop, I was like, boom, created an account. And so it's been great to connect with the fans over Twitter. So yeah, that's, um, it's my name, David Matranga one at Twitter. And then you can just search me on Facebook. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to another edition of The Ohio Guys. I'm Christian Ocampo, and this is David Matrengo, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, man. <laughs>